You're listening to the Veterinary Innovation Podcast. You're listening to the Veterinary Innovation Podcast. My name is Sean Wilkie, and along with my awesome co-host, we interview the innovators in this space every week. Looking forward to today's episode. Ivan, please get us started. Hi, I'm Ivan Zach. I'm very excited to introduce a colleague of mine, Dr. Kenneth Pierce. Dr. Pierce is the DVM with a specialty in ophthalmology. He's a founder and CEO of Vespicon, transforming the $64 billion industry by bridging specialty vet consultants to overwhelmed veterinary practices, driving more positive results. Leading a team of the top veterinary leaders, Dr. Pierce reduces the learning curve for general practicing veterinarians by sharing specialized expertise to elevate their patient outcomes and revenue. Beyond this role at Vespicon, Dr. Pierce is an inexperienced veterinary ophthalmologist whose academic and private practice career continues to educate, empower, and improve the health of the general public, veterinary community, and animals across the nation. Dr. Pierce, welcome to the show. Thank you for finding the time. Thank you. Thank you, Ivan and Sean. I'm happy to be here. So why don't you help us to understand how one specializes in one of the hardest and highest paid uh, board certifications in the industry and then goes, I don't like this. Let me do something else. Yeah. Or maybe you like this, but I would like to do something else. And it's a good thing because I see all kinds of entrepreneurs in our industry. And it seems like we do hit the wall despite our specializations, whether it's one, two or three board certifications. We still want to do something fun and entrepreneurial. Tell us about your journey. Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, as a comedy, I still do ophthalmology and VespaCon at, at the same time. But my journey started with uh, growing up in New Orleans, uh, Louisiana. Uh, at the time, there was only one African-American veterinarian uh, in the city, George Robinson, who uh, the advice of him and family helped steer me towards veterinary medicine. I knew I wanted to be a doctor, but didn't want to work on people. And so veterinary medicine came about and then uh, went to Tuskegee for undergrad, but came back to New Orleans to LSU for vet school. And in vet school, uh, really had a drive to specialize from the very beginning, had a very good interest in neuro and cardiology, but then decided uh, after having the ophthalmology class that this was it. It combined medicine and surgery. You can actually see what's going on in the disease process in the patient, as well as how much of a significant change it has to restore sight and, and improve that patient's quality of life. So from there, just kind of steered my career towards uh, networking and going to places where there were ophthalmologists in order to, as you already mentioned, get into a really competitive residency. Uh, and it wasn't my first attempt at trying a residency. I actually had to apply twice uh, and eventually got a residency at Michigan State. And then from there, I uh, went back, taught at LSU for about a little over a year and a half and then moved to private practice in New Jersey for about five years and then Dallas. Uh, for about three, and then decided to go out on my own and start my own business in Shreveport, Louisiana, called Veterinary Vision Center. And the whole point of that was obviously there was an opportunity there. Uh, otherwise, you know, we wouldn't be starting a business just anywhere. But that was a region of the United States that has never been serviced by permanent ophthalmologists on a daily basis there. And every day, either a doctor or a client tells me, thank you for being here. Um, so from that, and as well as all of my travels around uh, the United States from internships to internships and residency and, you know, working at various places, realized that there is a uh, shortage to spe access to specialty care, as well as obviously the pandemic and the large retirement in the veterinary industry uh, and the boom in the pet population is all uh, added more to the bottleneck of limited access. And so seeing the veterinarians uh, in various places where I was at. And what I do is I advise people on a daily basis about how to manage eye cases. Um, but seeing that and being able, how much of that has an impact in a more successful outcome on that patient's uh, health status, decided that I need to make this ubiquitous and, and give a more personal approach with VespaCon to the general practitioner so that they can feel supported and not out on a limb trying to do everything and be Superman or Superwoman without having specialists around. Super cool. Crazy story. Uh, you grew up in a place, uh, the listeners can't see you. Uh, they'll see a picture on the slide, but you're a young guy. You grew up in a place, one black African-American veterinarian. You use that as motivation to be another one, which is amazing, especially with such an underrepresented population group in veterinary medicine. So there's a whole episode that we could talk about there, <laughs> but let's, let's park that for now. It's pretty cool. Um, you're going down the road, running this thing, see this opportunity. What did that look like though? What was the genesis when you're like, okay, I'm going to now start this, 
business that's software enabled to kind of help all of the vets across the country, I'm guessing. Yeah. What was the genesis? And then what does it look like today? Yeah, so the genesis, so part of some of the details of that uh, move to Shreveport was at the time there was only a, another oncologist at uh, the practice where I set up my shop. So her and I were the only two specialists in the region. And when she decided to uh, leave and, and take a, a different position, just seeing how like the vets, again, how, how general practitioners had a void. Um, you know, there's no cardiologist, there was no internist around. Now they lose an oncologist. So just trying to figure out a better way to fill that void, as well as in talking to the general practitioners, you know, so people always kind of give you their uh, experience and, and the, the bad experience is better than the good experiences with some of the uh, teleconsulting ser services and such. So and thinking about how I can kind of change things or provide a, a service that is comprehensive and well-rounded, as well as be, make it personal uh, so that, you know, there's a human human interaction every time. And that's what as humans we thrive on, right? It on demand CE, being able to talk to somebody, learn about a case, not feel like you're being talked at, not having somebody that's not invested on the other line. It's really empowering as well as making it concierge to where that veterinarian can actually tell us when they're available and we meet them with a specialist or specialist to have that team-based approach. So so building this thing was more so of how how do we break down the barriers of access to specialists. And part of it is giving people a comprehensive network of specialists all around. Second thing is to make it reasonable and, and get people to understand that it's okay to ask for advice. And that is one of the biggest hurdles that we're doing to change the way that we practice vendor in medicine. Even if it is a simple question or just, you know, you just want to bounce something off a specialist or it's that complex case. A lot of, you know, it's hard as humans to take a um, to want to eat a piece of humble pie just to ask for help, right? Uh, and we're trying to make it in the business model to where there, that help is readily available for you. There's no ask. You just tell us when you need us and we we got you covered there. And it shows the our clients, our, our members who are using us, love us. They, they We're convenient. We are helping their patients. And we have a lot of testimonials where some of the general practitioners will say, you know, you saved this patient's life or... Like I learned so much now I'm doing X, Y, Z that I wasn't doing before. Um, so the, the proof is in the pudding, but a lot of it is just trying to, you know, get it, get it to a point where people can really see the value in it. And uh, that's, awesome. that's awesome. So um, Shreveport, Louisiana, I, that's the place I have been in Louisiana and I tried the gator sausage there. You yeah. could also, the one thing I remember you could either in the restaurant or somewhere, or maybe next to the airport, you could wrestle an alligator for 20 bucks. And <laughs> I remember where it was. And I believe if you lose, you don't have to pay. Well, yeah, so, probably not. <laughs> the, uh, so uh, this is, this is interesting. This is not the first platform now that comes through our podcast on the specialty medicine. So the, the special, I think this is the future of specialty yeah. medicine. And, uh, but the one thing that, that was escaping from me when I was trying to use the service like this is, is what you were saying. And I, I love that you're focusing on that, that your specialists are available when we need it. Uh, because working this into the workflow is just as difficult as working in uh, telemedicine, even though we had pandemic. Nobody figured, well, some people figured out, but not to a degree where I wish they were in the uh, veterinary medicine, figuring out the flow. Like, when do I do it? How do I do it? Do I go right after the case? Can I consult during the case? Is it something that more of a chronic case? In urgent care, uh, for us, we see an appointment, you know, the same day, we probably not see them ever after. Um, so it was interesting to see how we can work it in, and I'm still struggling to do it. So can you break it down in your vision? What are the types of veterinarians that would use service? And maybe walk us through the workflow. So is it the GP vet that's seen the case and it's chronic and they're reaching their kind of, uh, you know, knowledge in this particular area? As I usually tell my clients, I need an adult uh, from ophthalmology perspective or an adult surgeon or an adult internal medicine specialist to help me with this. Um, so is it for everybody? Is it for urgent cares? Is it for emergency? And just kind of the flow, what it would look like if I'm a vet on the floor, seeing a case that reached my limit of knowledge, and then how would you access it and the timing? Just kind of build a picture for us how you envision it. Yeah. So uh, when I made Vespa kind of our, our built it out, the whole goal was to make it super convenient and easy for everyone. So anybody, anywhere, national as well as international, we've done international consultations as well, as long as you have some form of a device, a computer, 
iPad or whatever, and some form of data transfer, internet, cell phone coverage, you've got VespaCon. It's all on VespaCon.com where um, the hospital or general practitioner or even the general practitioner's nursing team can go online to VespaCon.com. On the bottom right hand uh, corner of the web page is our consultation request widget where you just fill out information about how we contact you, the information about the case, the day and time that you would like to have the consultation, which can be booked same day, either as an emergency or as a initial or recheck consultation. That can also be booked several days in advance. Um, so if you know Wednesdays at 3 p.m. you're off work and want to talk, we can facilitate it then, as well as what specialty or specialties you need to discuss. Uh, and then at the very last thing is just details about the case and uh, if there's any specifics that we need to know on our end to help with uh, coordinating this consultation for you. Once you submit it, our uh, admin team, which are medically veterinary trained, understand, will read through it, help facilitate and streamline that consultation uh, request for you and get you linked with the advisor or advisors that you need. And we send you a link that y'all would select. Prior to that link being submitted, all, I mean, selected all of the documentations, video, DICOM images, whatever is associated with that case is uploaded so that uh, the specialist can review it prior to the consultation. And then y'all meet and discuss things. And because it's vet to vet, everything is nice and streamlined. And the advisor at the end of that consultation types up a brief summary as well as we provide the recording of the conversation for you for your records there. And then if it's a recheck consultation, that same recording and previous summary is turned is um, copied into the new request so that that same continuity of information is carried. Obviously, we try to keep you with the same advisor, especially if you had a great experience. We want y'all to cultivate that relationship. But if it happens to be that the advisor wasn't available and you had needed someone else, the same amount of information and detail is transferred. So for your question, who is it for? It's for everybody, for that rural vet that has nobody around that's in a small town we can make you basically the specialist of every field that if you want to uh with specialist advice or even in metropolitan areas where there are specialists around but sometimes it's hard to get them on the phone or you don't have that specialist that you need like a behaviorist or a sports medicine rehab person or a radiation oncologist we have a vast network of pretty much almost every specialty readily available for veterinarians and our business model is set up to where the hospitals have the agreement and all the doctors within the hospital use us unlimited because we find that the a la carte option is a barrier to use. Now, we do provide a la carte as an option, but for that client that's on a budget or that veterinarian that feels guilty about asking for help or, or trying to get some questions answered, those become limitations for use. And then the only person that suffers is the veterinarian. Because the veterinarian doesn't get the knowledge, as well as that veterinarian can pass on that knowledge to the client and to the patient. So we find the subscription model works best where vets don't have to worry about it. They pay for it, use us, use us and abuse us, and you, the return on investment is tenfold. That's really cool. And I think that's the, probably the first time I've heard of that approach in the specialty kind of uh, services world. So really, really interesting. Um, my question to you is you said you've got representation across most of the specialties or all of the specialties how do you get here and and where are you like what what's the client base look like you know and then maybe what's five years from now look like if everything that you're dreaming is going the way you're thinking yeah so uh if you when you go on our website on vespacon.com if you select team you'll see our growing list of advisors a lot of actually the vast majority of them are individuals that i've know personally have worked with have you know, taking care of my pets in the past and are trusted by me and vetted by me to provide veterinarians with very quality, empowering knowledge and advice. So rest assured that they are going to give you as best advice as if I was giving you the best advice that I could there. So they they have formed the foundation for VespaCon. Uh, and now we are um, either through word of mouth or, or the name uh, getting out there, or even through recommendations by our advisors for other specialists that are on the same wavelength and same um, quality of care and compassion for our veterinary community. They are they are bringing them into the fold. So we are always going to continue to grow, obviously, based on demand. We are, are steadily growing and have, are reaching out to various state and as well as uh, national you know meetings and things like that to help 
put the word out there. A lot of it, you know, it just takes a lot of conversation because again, we're kind of changing or slightly changing the way in which people look at uh, access to specialty care. And there's a couple of things that we also do that we haven't touched on yet that helps define us as kind of the premier concierge um, consultation service. We we do provide concierge referral services, which is something that other companies don't. And the reason behind that is the bottleneck that we've had with trying to get patients into specialty hospitals. So on the front end, we help hospitals manage and do as much as they can within their wheelhouse with specialist advice. But then when it gets to a point where it's outside of their wheelhouse, we, because they're a member, because they're using us, have the veterinarian and their team go back to practicing and we procure the timely referrals to specialty hospitals in their area. So we are already been in uh, meetings and communications with these large groups that have specialty hospitals to establish that relationship and try to get their clients in kind of front door access, right? To limit that bottleneck, especially in places where it can take three to four weeks to get to said specialist. That, you know, that case changes a, a great deal of, uh, in that amount of time. We also provide some teleradiology as well as telecardiology support. Uh, so we helping to alleviate that bottleneck there. And then the future as we grow, we're mainly aiming obviously again, more so along the lines of all things uh, DVM support related. So providing our members or as well as groups, uh, webinars, wet labs, uh, CE content, anything that a specialist should be able to and, and can provide just more so from a nice comprehensive network. It's not individual. You can say, hey, I'm going to use Vespacon and I have access to an internist, a radiation, a radiologist, a cardiologist to discuss, you know, hypertension or, or whatever, you know. That's awesome. Um, so um, as we're running to the end of the episode, uh, we usually run through very quickly. I would like to ask, where can the listeners find you? Um, is it a secret or not uh, what the subscription is cost with of subscription for clinic um and uh, yeah so and where do they go to sign up and uh, and explore sure thing so you can always find us on vespacon.com that's v-e-s-p-e-c-o-n.com and vespacon stands for veterinary specialty consultants i wanted a one oh, cool. name uh company name that could be a noun or a verb let's vespacon fluffy like let's there do it <laughs> um so we're found on vespacon.com. Uh, you can either hit contact or sign up. When you click on sign up, it doesn't mean that you're automatically signed up. It's just to get uh, some contact information from you so that we can reach you. Um, our membership uh, is based off of the number of doctors within the hospital. So for a single doctor practice, it's $2.99 a month. If you sign up for the year, we give you the 13th month complimentary. So it brings the, the price point down to two seventy six. dollars So it's less than $10 a day which is less than what you pay for lunch for unlimited consultations um, on a daily basis. So really inexpensive off the top end of the hospital's budget and everything again that you make from the advice is just lanyard, it's money in your pocket, very easy. Um, the a la carte options are 200 for an initial recheck. I mean, excuse me, 200 for an initial consultation, 100 for a recheck consultation, 350 for an emergency consultation. And getting back to your urgent care hospital, the emergency consultations are done within the hour of the request being submitted. Our fastest emergency consultation so far has been 10 minutes from the time the request came in to a criticalist being on. So so we we are concierge. We meet you where you are. <laughs> that sounds awesome and super attractive from a pricing perspective. I have like 100 other questions. Uh, I guess we'll have to have you back. Good luck with everything you're doing. We like to wrap up the same way every time. A couple questions for you, a book, YouTube video. Um, you know, something that inspires you, uh, you, you're bringing a lot of good energy. So that's part of the reason I wanted to ask you a bunch of other questions, but we don't have time. So I'll ask you that one. Yeah. The, uh, a good book that I just kind of revisited was failing forward by, uh, John Maxwell. That was, it's always good, uh, motivation to know that, you know, you got to step out there. You got to be bold. You got to, to be an innovator, to be uh, a leader, you know, put your neck out there and it's okay to if things don't go um, the right way the first time, but to always revisit and think about what happened, what led to that process. Why did it not work out for you? And then adjust and, and make it work the next time. So, uh, so yeah, so that was a good one. That's awesome. Okay, and the last question that we ask, is there another innovator in the industry that you would recommend to be on this podcast? If you haven't had already, I would uh, recommend Nicole Bruno. Uh, she's the CEO of BlendVet. She's doing some very good things with increasing diversity within the veterinary community, as well as uh, 
within the youth and with her pathway event. And um, she's also a, a, a undergrad friend of mine too. So she's a good people. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to the Veterinary Innovation Podcast. If you want to hear about our new episodes, please follow us on any social media channel. Also, you can check out our website at veterinaryinnovationpodcast.com. See you next week.